Britain assistant. In modern Britain. Then a big action. The most dramatic 999 calls. The car is now on fire. Often require not one, but two emergency responders. I'm a police officer. She's paramedic. In Kent, one of Britain's biggest counties. I'll see if we just cover it all. A groundbreaking joint response unit has been formed. Ready, set. Where both police and paramedic combine in one specialist vehicle. You've been arrested for assault. To answer some of the most extreme 999 calls. Right, stand clear. Everyone clear? Shock. We already outdone ourselves on that one. Face the wall. I can't believe we got it. Coming up. A shooting terrorizes a sleepy village. I have got guns pointed, so I'm doing that here. A country walk ends in agony. One, two, three. And a very lucky escape. If we've gone head on into that lamppost, then we'll be dealing with it later. Rural Kent, with its picturesque villages, isn't without its dangers. Where's the emergency? Close enough to assist, please contact control over. So when someone calls 999, I am short patrol. I will see if I can get someone to attend over. The joint response units must be ready for anything. This poor guy has been laying on the floor for so long, and it's very much appreciated. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, see, Cam, I've just had that come through. Would you like us to start making way to that? There have been reports of a shooting in a small village in the Kent countryside, and the JRU team has been requested for medical support. Yeah, that's all safe, thank you. But obviously, stand by for some assessment. What's the Finn? Finn, Force Instant Manager. So they are an inspector based at Force Control Room who will look at incidents and assess them to see what sort of response is required. For example, something like this, where firearms will be involved. Kent Police Special Inspector Tom and Joint Response Paramedic Willow from the South East Coast Ambulance Service have been asked to meet at a rendezvous point with armed officers. We got it initially as a patient got an injury, so that was thrown at him to injure his leg. But now reported that actually thinks he's been shot. So for us, in terms of police involvement, it's because it's a firearm involved. If someone's got a gunshot wound. If that's hit an artery, that's going to be fatal for them. It could even turn into a murder. So, Fox shot four or one minute from the RBP. The priority is for a firearms team to go in and make the scene safe. Once the threat's been neutralised, units such as myself and C Camp will be called in to deal with casualties, to deal with arrests and that sort of thing. The priority for us is to keep our distance until we're given the green light to go in, because the last thing we want to do is get... The first concern is to avoid further danger to the public and to themselves. Sometimes it can be quite brutal and it can be quite difficult because you've got a patient that's potentially dying. Um, yeah, but if I can't get them alive, I can't treat them. No, that's all right. I found it. How far are we from all uh, Four minutes. The rendezvous point is just a few miles from the scene of the shooting. I think we're meeting here. I think we're just meeting here. So I'll be people. I'll say the farm. Gun crime in the UK is rare, and this is a first for paramedic Willow. But actually, in Kent, especially, like, we don't see a lot, a lot of um, gun crime at all, do we? I mean, I, I've, I've been in Kent Police 11 and a half years now, um, and I've been to a total of two firearms incidents, this being the second. Shootings and stabbings are far lower in rural areas than the big cities, but Kent Police like every other force, have a firearms team who's always ready to deploy. Child, so, if I'm arresting going, and they're going to be going, they're going to be kind of hanging back a little bit. Cool. So, yeah. So, let's get, get in there. No, no. Get, get in there. Get, get have, have we got confirmed whether there's a firearms license on the premises or not? If we follow up the pine, just once they've neutralised, we can then deal with casualty. Yeah, and then we can bring the van in the DB. What's happening, just so I can let them know? Sorry? What's happening now? 
Uh, so they're going first. We will follow in as medical. With the firearms team already in place, the JRU has the green light to move in behind them. Who do we need? Is it life threatening? Is it safe? Said she's the first thing that they're looking at. Jobs like this kind of very escalate very, very quickly. And as soon as you mention the word gun, nobody can risk it. So we'll take it very, very seriously. So um, hence why you have, you know, a massive presence from all different sorts of managers and resources. The shooting has reportedly taken place outside one of the houses on the estate. The suspect is thought to be hiding somewhere inside. So, the two unmarked cars are the police cars, and the car with the blue lights going is the dog unit. Because firearms haven't given us the okay to go and it's seen as safe, um, we're having to wait currently, so... Um, of course, if shots are fired, then we will need to move in imminently to save life and live. Then we'll see, Cam. The JRU team get the call to move to the front line. I've never seen that before, so firearms in Banner Carvers. Tactical firearms officers have taken up position. I've just been warned this earth, they have got guns pointed, so do exactly as you're told. With eyes on the suspect. Shooting incidents are fortunately rare. Can anyone respond to a C1 emergency? That's a C1. Unlike the 30,000 cardiac arrests which happen outside of hospital every year. Broadcast, broadcast, any patrol, any patrol able to assist with a C1. Got cardiac arrest in a public place, you call sign out. Special Sergeant Jack and Paramedic Nathan are going to a Cat 1 call, which indicates immediate threat to life. So we're going to a train station for a cardiac arrest. A cardiac arrest is when the heart stops beating, blood stops flowing to the organs, and the person stops breathing. Zero three. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to give you a scene update as soon as I get there. We're going to be first on scene, and we'll jump on CPR. So as soon as I'll give you an update, I will. Without help to start their heart, they will die. It's different to a heart attack, which is when the arteries supplying the heart are blocked. Platform, which platform? Which platform? Which one? This one down there. But a heart attack can lead to cardiac arrest. The call came in just minutes ago. The man on the floor has no pulse. The team need to move fast. Nathan prepares the defibrillator to try and shock his heart back to life. Do you want to get the pads out, mate? Pads on? Yeah. Yeah, cheers, mate. But it takes time to set up. And in the fight for life, every second counts. Oh, mate, where are the pads? Uh, just up. The man is stuck under the seats, yeah. and the team needs space to start CPR while they wait for the defibrillator to charge. Not waiting for the pads, paramedic Alex starts immediate chest compression to try and restart his heart. Just trying to hold me. Uh, the defibrillator is fired up. Clear. Everyone clear? Yeah. And engaged. Right, stand clear. Everyone clear? Yeah. Shocked. At Chatham Railway Station, a man has gone into cardiac arrest, and paramedics have used the defibrillator to try and kickstart his heart. We get the size five eye gel as well. Everybody clear, shock in. I've got a pulse. Yeah, I've got a pulse, he's breathing. Oh. Uh, tell Darren to get a trolley and stuff ready. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Darren, get a trolley and a scoop ready, mate. Trolley and a scoop. Yeah, mate. It seems to have worked. We've got a good end tidal. We've got rest of 15 at the moment. The patient's heart is beating again, but still in a 
critical condition. You're making good respiratory effort. So, pupils are freeze. In order to give life-saving drugs as quickly as possible, Nathan's colleague Alex drills into the patient's shin, so drugs will go straight into his bone marrow. So we've had, what, two shots, was it, or three in the end? Two shots. Two shots. Uh, we're doing that at the moment. Yeah. So the It's got a very strong pounding sense. Yes. I think there's not a lot of fluids in the His heart is gaining strength. While the paramedics work on keeping the patient alive, Jack has been busy looking for contacts of loved ones. Found a wallet, but he's got no driving license in it, so he's got no date of birth. But I found a letter that's got his home address. So they're going to get some officers there, um, firstly to tell the next of kin, secondly, so they can get down to the hospital, um, and thirdly, so we can find out any details about him that we need. When patients are in cardiac arrest, they're not breathing, their heart is not beating. For all intents and purposes, they are dead at that moment. He's not out of danger. The crew need to get him to hospital urgently. Heart can stop at any time. It's still a really critical condition to be in. Kent coastline and countryside is a dog walker's paradise. But sometimes a day out with the pooch doesn't end up as planned. Got an address, it's actually in a field, I believe, from a cattle. A member of public's got their foot stuck. Special Inspector Scott and Joint Response Paramedic Aisha are on their way to help someone who's been injured while walking his pet. Is it a male or female? A male. So he's fallen over. And he's got his arm stuck. Has his arm stuck? Yeah, a fractured arm. I don't know if he's got anything stuck. I think they're just saying that there's a cattle group on the way out. Right, so he's not got stuck in the group. Think, no, I don't think he's got stuck in it. I think he's just fallen and fractured his arm. So essentially we're on our way to a male that's um, fallen over in a field. Um, potentially he's got a fractured arm. Um, unknown sort of level of injury at the moment. Uh, we may have obviously obtained other injuries, but say when we get there, we'll uh, assess the situation and we'll uh, go from there. So he's out in the elements at the moment. Uh, it's kind of raining on, on and off. The call came in 45 minutes ago. So any patient that's getting cold, that's going to deteriorate even quicker. <laughs> In a village in rural Kent, a woman has been shot. As they wait for the suspect to come out, the firearms officers are standing by. I've just been warned this uh, they have got guns pointed, so do it as you're told. Suddenly, reports come in that the victim who's been shot is being brought out. And the police are asking for a medic. Right, to your distance. JRU paramedic Willow has been called in to help the victim. Willow, hello. Oh, she's just taking a couple of shots to her leg today. Okay. So I put the um, the field dressing on. Okay. Stemming bleeding. She has been bleeding. Okay. She's uh, been fine. She's a bit upset, but hello. she's been fine. Any other patients? No, OK. Just come have a seat over here for a minute. While Willow assesses the injury... Have a seat there for me, OK? A manhunt is underway. Can you describe the person who shot you in the best detail you can? What does he look like? Is he a bit tall, short? So, I'm cleaning my leg and I look down. So I can't say. Yep. Uh, no, so we're trying to get a um, description of the fender, but she can't really remember too much. That's as good as it gets, okay. unfortunately. So we believe we've got an active shooter in the address, given the fact that the lady's got a, a shot to her leg. The firearm's yeah. trying to encourage the guy to come out. If you look up there, they're utilising the drone to try and keep an eye on what's going on, see if they can get a bit of vantage point. And this 
there is potentially a firearm involved, the last thing you want to do is put an officer in harm's way. Whereas a drone is out of the way and you can see everything and you can wait as long as need be for him to come out. Okay. Willow inspects two wounds on either side of the woman's leg. Um, well, it would depend. Is the bullets come out now? It appears the bullet has passed clean through the leg and crucially missed any bones. So it's going to be hospital. Oh, guys, a panic attack. How are you going to get a panic? Listen, you're absolutely fine. Okay. Well, no, no, we've got a team chat. Yeah, we don't have a panic attack. <sighs> We're all here, aren't we? You've got me, you've got the police. All right, you're absolutely fine. <sighs> I think she's still got a lot of adrenaline going through her body, so she had a bit of a panic attack in the car. Just try and relax, okay? All right? I know there's a lot that's happened. It's all quite a massive shock, isn't it? <laughs> okay. But your leg can be fixed. Um, just an update for you on this job if you want one over. So the lady does appear to have um, two puncture wounds just below the knee um, on her left leg. Um, there's no active bleeding and no critical hemorrhage at all over. So she's absolutely fine. It looks as if a bullet has gone in um, just beside her knee and come out on the other side. I think she's incredibly lucky in terms of whether the gun has hit her. She is lucky, but the fact the bullet went clean through shows how dangerous it might have been. It's not been identified what she was shot with. Um, I'd imagine by the wound, that's going to be a very light caliber weapon. But yeah, for now, it's just a waiting game. Suddenly, more than an hour after the shooting, the standoff appears to come to an end. Is anyone able to go forward to the OC uh, by the vehicle there? Take the, there's a prisoner off to easy surrender, does he? he? He's coming out there for rest and stuff, isn't he? So okay, all right. Good 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 take him away from there now. The man they believe fired the shot emerges from the building. The good news is one male's come out without further incident. He's been arrested for various offences. He will be taken off to custody and interviewed in the morning. The injured woman is on her way to hospital. You shouldn't be anybody in this world. But do I hate someone that done this to me tonight? Because yes, I do. Because they... That is cruel, that is evil, that's nasty you've ever done this to me. Fortunately, she's not in any danger. But only because the bullet didn't hit any vital organs or arteries. The injury, to look at it face value, you think she's got a couple of scratches. Or, you know, like a, a small puncture wound, you wouldn't necessarily associate that with a gun. Gun wounds, it comes down to luck really in terms of where they hit you. They hit you in the wrong place, you know, within minutes, seconds, you could be dead. Right. Skipper, are you, are you happy for us as J.I.U. to stand down and... OK, right, thank you. For now, it's just a case of searching the house for any potential evidence, and we've left the local policing team to get on with that. So, for us, it's back on patrol. In Chatham, J.I.U. paramedics have managed to restart the heart of a patient who had gone into cardiac arrest but they urgently need to get him to the intensive care unit. They're just discussing HEMS, whether HEMS come to assist and take him somewhere. As I say, it'll be Medway or William Harvey, given the traffic. That's why they're looking at HEMS so far. HEMS, the Helicopter Emergency Medical Service, is on standby as the patient may need to be put into a coma to prevent brain damage. Can we plumb into the main oxygen? We're not at the moment, but we can do. It's down there. We're not trying to stop someone from dying. We're literally trying to bring someone back from the dead. Um, and that's what we've done for this patient. He was dead and we brought him back. We have got the helicopter coming, hence, um, because they could provide a kind of higher level of care. Time is absolutely of the essence at the moment. One hour after 999 was called, the patient is taken to hospital with a HEMS helicopter trauma team in attendance. They've sedated him. They're now going to take him up to the nearest suitable hospital. Definitely not out of the water yet for him. He's obviously had a lot more trauma to his body uh, with the CPR, with the other query heart attack as well. Not sure if there's anything else that's going on. Um, so he's still very much a time critical patient and needs 
A man who's been walking his dog has fallen and broken his arm. The incident has happened in a field on the fairly uninhabited Who Peninsula, nine miles from Rochester. Luckily, the JRU vehicles are four by fours that are designed to handle off-road call-outs. They can get to places standard ambulances cannot. First time off-roading in these. I got stuck in a field in an ambulance once. That's how I've paid can't push us out. <laughs> oh, really? It was really wet. It was a bit of bloody winter. A team of paramedics trained to operate in hazardous environments has arrived just before them. Hello, you're right. You're not too bad. This is Dave. Yeah, lovely. Dave has humorous fracture. Humorous fracture, yeah. He's got a broken humerus, the bone in the upper arm, quite a big, thick bone. Yeah, a few checks, get yeah. some drops on. Absolutely. Do you want me to try and cannulate yeah, for you? Yeah. Fractures of the humerus can be incredibly painful. Even just breathing can hurt. So Aisha's first priority is to give Dave intravenous pain relief before she moves him. Third arm's the left one. Left one, I'll go for the right then. Right. Just going to be Oh, bless you, darling. Dave's arm muscle have reacted to the break in the bone by going into spasm. Uh, Let's get to this arm, sweetheart. I need to try and get a cannula in. Dogs. Uh, bloody dogs. Oh, um, should we get some gas and air? Gas and air is a mix of oxygen and nitrous oxide and works as a short-acting painkiller. Very good, um, good drug. You've got to make sure you haven't um, been deep sea diving recently. Not bad. I swear. Don't worry, you swear as much as you want. Aisha wants to give Dave stronger intravenous pain relief. But Dave has been lying outside in the cold for over an hour, making it difficult for Aisha to get a needle into his veins. Sorry, darling. Gonna have to go again with that one. I need some tape. Yeah, draw a red one, isn't it? Yeah, please. When the first attempt to cannulate failed, the patient can tense up, making the next one even more difficult. Relax your hands. <laughs> your fingers are tense. <laughs> there we go. I oh, know it's not easy. I'm stabbing you. Got that tape there. Yep. Brilliant. Thank you. All right. Go for it, Tom. Okay. The second attempt fails, and with the temperature dropping, unless they get him moved soon, his condition. Critical. Special Sergeant Jack are responding to an emergency call from a lifeline company, a service for frail and disabled people when they need emergency help at home. It's going to be these here, isn't it? It's 86 as we just arrived. The only information the team has is that the woman inside is an epileptic and her seizure detector has gone off. a fitting. There's no answer. Hello, ambulance. Nathan needs to get in to check the woman's condition because a prolonged seizure can sometimes be fatal. Key safe. Fortunately, the emergency services have been given the key safe code for just such an emergency. And it's front of lane. Call back one, answered, can hear patient making noises but not responding. Hello, ambulance. Now they just need to find a lane. Hello. Hello. Oh, cats. Sorry, little cats. Hello, my love. See ambulance service. 
to find her, but she's not responding. Hello, my love. Hello. Fifteen miles away on the Hoop Peninsula, Dave has fallen and broken his arm while walking his dog. So what happened? Did he just pull me or? Yeah, he's a bit of a nightmare. Yeah. He's running around the back of me, so yeah. pulled my arm up my back. But he'd also down that bit. Out my leg as yeah. well, so when I tried to step out of the beach, on your arm. I've like fallen backwards, both my arms underneath my body. Oh, not good. And I knew straight away. JRU paramedic Aisha is trying to inject painkillers, but has been unable to find a vein. And Dave's temperature is dropping, making the procedure even trickier. You've good veins. Oh, you've been out in the cold. A third attempt is made. This time, into Dave's ankle. Is that Antonox helping, Dave? Everyone's relief. The needle has gone into a vein, so Aisha can attach a cannula. Right, so I have some paracetamol in. That'll start working really quickly. Dave is immediately given pain relief. But paracetamol isn't strong enough to deal with the pain Aisha knows is to come. Have you ever had morphine? No. So very, very good pain relief. Um, makes you feel like you've had one or two gins, maybe a few more. We had to make sure we get some pain relief on board. I think you haven't had morphine before, I'll go three meals to begin with, see how we go. So that we can then splint that arm, pull it, get some traction on it, get those bones back in a more neutral position um, so that we can relieve some of his pain. Going to give you an anti-sickness and some of the really good stuff, all right? Morphine can make a patient feel sick and dizzy, but it's essential as Aisha wants to realign his broken arm while he's lying on the ground. Right, those drugs are in. No, it will do, love. Don't worry. Okay. Just out, no problem. Do you want us to see him right? Any bit. No, you're doing all right. It's just where the drugs all going through the body. Okay? You've never had morphine. Okay. Okay. All right, darling. You'll start to feel a bit more with it in a moment. Dave's wife, Deb, is on hand to help relax him as the painkillers get to work. So, waiting for pain relief to kick in so that we can get on with putting traction on that bone because without the pain relief, it would have been excruciating. Dave, get you up off the floor very soon, all right? Yeah. Get you straight onto that bed, all right, buddy? To get you nice and warm. Another dose of morphine is needed. Doing really well. So, yeah, quite a tricky one. Don't you swear as much as you want. Nothing we haven't heard before. Dave's now had seven milligrams of morphine. The maximum paramedics can give is 20 milligrams. So, yeah, we're going to give it a bit of a tug and then put a bit of pressure on it. Yeah, not for about six offers. <laughs> <laughs> With the morphine kicking in, it's time to attempt the realignment. So we go on three. One, two, three. Uh, uh, you feel that pulling? Yeah. Need a bit more? <laughs> the broken bone is pulled apart against his spasming muscles, which are trying to hold the bones in place. The bones are back in alignment. And Dave can finally be helped to his feet. Ready? Three, one, two, three. Well done. It's alright, I've got, I've got you. No, I'm not. It's just a bit tender. Just say the least. You are very welcome. When they get to A&E, Dave will be x-rayed, and the bones may have to be reset again under anaesthetic, but at least he'll have a nice warm bed. The only thing you've got to apologise for is not doing it on a nice warm day.
Back in Gravesend, JRU paramedic Nathan is treating a 32-year-old woman who's had a seizure and is unresponsive. The pop me your finger, my love, all right? While Nathan checks Elaine's oxygen levels, Special Sergeant Jack has been looking for clues to help. Right, here we go. There's a maze date. She was not well, had a headache, been busy all day. Right, thank you. It's a seizure diary. Sunday, in bad pain, Nathan. Diaries are kept by many epileptics to try and work out what triggers their seizures. I'm going to do your blood sugars and your temperature, all right, my love? Hello? It's the ambulance service. You've had a seizure. Suddenly, Elaine regains consciousness without medical intervention from Nathan, but he still needs to do more checks. Let's go pop this in your ear a minute. I'm going to do a small drop of blood from your finger, OK? It'll be a sharp scratch. Some people with epilepsy have back-to-back -back seizures, so Nathan is checking Elaine's temperature, blood pressure and blood sugar levels. How many cats do you have? Two. We shut the door before we opened your door, all right? They're all fine. They're just in the other room. Have you been feeling unwell at all? Oh, you got a kidney infection. Oh, yeah. Infections that cause high temperatures can trigger a seizure. How long has that been going on for? A week, oh, bless you. Do you find you normally have more seizures when you got the infections? Yeah. Oh, bless you. What's your normal plan after having a seizure? Do you go to hospital? Do you stay here? I'm not going to stay here. Unless I have more than four five. Oh, OK, that's fine. No worries. I am known to have back to back. Yeah. Oh, OK, I'll oh, bless you. Hey, you just had the one today. As far as you're aware. Is there any way of checking? Does your machine tell you how many? Um, my lifeline normally goes off. Yeah, so your lifeline's gone off today. That's why we've come out. It's a good little bit of kit you've got to call us. How do you feel now? Do you feel your normal self after a seizure? Yeah? That's... <laughs> and that's normal for you after a seizure? Yeah. yeah. All right. So all your numbers are OK. So what I'll do is I'll do a bit of paperwork, and once we finish the paperwork, if you're still feeling like you are now, we'll leave you here. If not, it'll be a little trip to hospital, all right? Thankfully, Elaine's vital signs are normal. Oh, shut up, fine. Oh, that's mine, sorry. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Elaine's been coping with epilepsy since she was just 13. I can't work because my seizures. I used to do caring for a little elderly lady that lived next door in a wheelchair and I couldn't, couldn't do it anymore because seizures got in the way. I used to go to college, they got in the way. But I really want to be a nurse. But that gets in the way. It is difficult. It's part of my life, though. I've adjusted to it. What's the rabbit's name? Babe. <laughs> Elaine's pets, two cats and a rabbit, accompany for her. How old's your cat? Don't like cats. Don't touch them. I don't like looking at them. <laughs> I don't own them. <laughs> don't draw the line. Cats, <laughs> big no from me. Dogs, love them. Sorry. <laughs> I won't be old to them. I just... <laughs> and Jack's tolerance to cats has reached its limit. Oh man, he's got out of here by the nose. Jack <laughs> and Nathan are confident that Elaine is out of danger. She's back to her normal self. We're happy to leave her here. It's safe for her to stay here, even though she lives on her own. She's got all the safety measures in place. Leave her with some worsening care advice of what to do going forwards, um, take it steady and to call us back if any symptoms change. And failing that, she has another seizure, her alarm will go off and we'll be notified anyway. <laughs> As night rolls in, the number of accidents on the road increase by 40%.
getting to a collision quickly can be the difference between life and death. Oh, poor guy. When did this come in? Oh, it's literally just come in. Here, Carl. A crash has just happened on a busy dual carriageway near Gravesend. Control, Juliet Romeo 03. Uh -huh. Do you want to show us running to that RTC? I've had it, thank you. Joint response paramedic Nathan and Special Sergeant John head there on blue lights. Um, for your proximity to the crew on now, so let me know with that. Will do, thank you very much. We're five minutes out. So we are currently going to an RTC on the A2 by Gravesend. Um, we haven't got too much in front at the moment. Just there, it's male airbags being deployed, um, lots of blood everywhere, so like, it could be anything, so we'll go and make a quick assessment. Obviously it's on it's on the A2, it's a fast road, uh, so we need other units to help slow traffic and make a safe working environment. A car is facing the wrong way down the A2, and its back end has smashed into a lamppost. Is the guy still in the car? Carriageway near Gravesend, joint response officers are dealing with a high speed crash. Is the guy still in the car? You've got blood coming from somewhere, is it alright if I have a look? You've got a nice little split on your forehead. While Nathan checks the driver, John tries to work out why he crashed. Got a nasty crash. He's obviously lost control and spun around, and you can see from the damage to the lamppost uh, and to his car. There was a reasonably high speed accident. I think he's really lucky to walk away. Crashing into, into a lamppost, I don't, I don't think he's gone straight on. If he'd gone head on into that lamppost, then we'll be dealing with a completely different scene and, and probably a fatal. And a closer inspection shows just how lucky the driver was. The bank is really steep. Uh, all it would have taken is probably another half a metre and he would have tumbled down rolled over and, and then probably become trapped. Just assess him at the moment. He's got a nice little head injury, so he'll probably be conveyed to hospital. Oh, no worries. I'll keep the money for you then. Thank you very so much. Will you wear your seatbelt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, how fast did you... No, no, no. Just got to check. Will you... Did your airbags go off? No. No? That's fine. Has your stereo come out or anything? Yeah, it has. It's probably your stereo that's in your head then. You any pain in your neck? No, no, no. I'm not I head in my I would suggest you go to hospital for that head injury. Yeah, yeah. I should have a quick look at your car a second, okay? Yeah. So check out the vehicle just to see kind of what the damage is to the inside the car to work out kind of what injuries he's likely to have. Um, his stereo's come out, so it looks like that's whacked him in the face. That is my, that's my life. Was it just you in the car? How oh, are you? Oh no. Well, I think you'll be going off to hospital now. Yeah, so he's very fortunate considering he's in a bit of an older car. Doesn't have the same sort of safety equipment as modern cars do. For the medical side of things, have you had any drugs tonight? Do you ever take cocaine? No. <laughs> no? Yeah, that's fine. Any, any alcohol or anything? Uh, I did last night. Uh, he's at the moment in the back of the ambulance being assessed by the paramedics and uh, he'll be going to hospital once that is uh, a clean of his wounds. Uh, we breathalyse before he goes as well to see if uh, alcohol was a factor in the crash and the officers here will follow up with them to see if there's any offences. The breath test is negative, so there are no driving related offences. So just okay, talking you, to uh, the officers in the back of the ambulance, um, the male's been arrested for a domestic incident. The driver will still be going to hospital, but with a police officer, and will be taken to custody once he's been treated. So, uh, it looks like the male was either wanted or breached his bow, he's been arrested for criminal damage. Kent 
is one of the largest counties in England, bordered by the English Channel to the south and London to the north. Tonight, JRU paramedic Daniel and Special Constable Tom are in Greenhithe, just 23 miles from central London. Ourselves and the ambulance service just had about three or four calls uh, about uh, a car crash, uh, potentially a female patient with chest injuries, trapped because they can't open the doors. An injured motorist trapped inside her car will need both a police and paramedic response and the team is only five minutes away. This is a prime example of quick patient care, but again sort of helps our divisional colleagues, our response officers from picking that up. As they arrive, it seems a car has hit a parked vehicle. Is she still in the car, is she? I ran the other side, I ran the other side. Hello, you are right? The driver is unable to free herself. No, oh, it's all right, just relax, okay? Tell me what's happened. I don't know what happened. What is the last thing you remember then? I don't know. It's fine, no worries. What do you suffer with? What medical conditions? Um, I've, I've got a, a thing in my heart here. It, it's a loop recorder, because I was getting palpitations and they're black out. Uh, okay. But I haven't had nothing like that for a long time. A loop recorder is a small heart monitor fitted under the skin to record the heart's rhythm. Was you wearing your seatbelt? Yeah. You know, that's good. While Dan checks her over, Tom focuses on traffic management. Uh, so at the moment, I'm just sort of like keeping the scene safe for Dan, just so he can um, he can crack on and get on with what he needs to do. How are we feeling at the moment? When I breathe, it hurts. When you breathe, it hurts. Oh, yeah. this side. And down that side, yeah? That's I feel right. sick as well. If you're going to be vomit, vomit that way. <laughs> My first thing I noticed that she was very anxious, very emotional, very upset. Which I completely understand. Oh. Tom? Yes, oh. yeah. Do you know where, know where the Entonox is in the back of that? Entonox? Yeah. Is it just a, yeah, I'll, that I'll have a look. bag, yeah? Yes, mate, yeah, I'll have a look. I'll tell you what, Tom, get the square little red bag, the drugs bag. Drugs bag as well, yeah? Yeah, mate. Oh, that's this one for that's you. It, mate. Yeah, cool. Entonox is a short-acting painkiller, more commonly known as gas and air. Oh, and this? No, I haven't yet. She reckons she's hit the steering wheel because of the force, and she sits quite close because she's quite short. Um, sure or not, she's just done a couple of weeks and now. I've had a feel of a collarbone. It all feels fine. So it's just she needs an expo on her chest, really. An ambulance has been called to take Bev to hospital, but until it gets here, she needs something for her pain. Dan injects paracetamol straight into her bloodstream. I need in the camera. Three months. Oh, your job. Bev had just left one patient and was driving to another when the accident happened. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I just looked like it happened. I just. I pulled my handbrake off, I took my seatbelt off, I pan panicked and then I realised I couldn't move my left side in such agony. How fast was you going, Beth? I don't know. Could we going fast? I don't just left Swansea. Swansea, 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 Swansea to my last customer, to go on to a customer in Dartford. So no, I wouldn't have been doing that. I, was, I would have been doing under the speed limit. I would have been doing under 40. As the ambulance crew arrived to help, Bev begins to recall the moments before the crash. I just remember a bang, and I thought, what? Wow. You know, it sounds like you might have blacked out then. It does, all right? We'll get you now, but we'll check the heart out completely, all right? I think she's blacked out of the wheel. Now, she has a cardiac monitor in, a 24-hour tape, so she's got some ongoing heart issues. Am I pushing, Bev? Am I pushing? There we go, all right. Whether or not that's the cause for her to faint at the wheel, I won't know. Unfortunately, when she gets to the hospital and have some blood tests, they have had the word at. Now Bev is safely out of the car. I don't think it will quite pass the MOT. Tom's priority is to clear the road to let the backlog of traffic through. Once inside the ambulance, the team checks on Bev's heart. Because we've created, she's had a blackout at the wheel. 
the, re the reasons for black are, are, are endless. It could be like, could be neurological, could be cardiac. The list is endless. Um, so we're just doing an ECG because we know about the black hair. She's got cardiac history, just to rule out any serious heart problems. Before she goes to hospital, Tom needs to eliminate drink driving as a cause. She's going to get this fitted, all right? We don't, you know, we don't automatically assume they are drunk or I don't have any indication to if she is. But we still do it as a routine just to make sure. Big deep breath. A little bit harder if you can. Has it done it? It's done it. Yeah. Ah. Zero. I told you. I know. I don't know. Grab hold of that. What? Well, that's your souvenir. That is your souvenir for tonight, oh, as well you. as a smashed up car. Um, is it right off? Oh, yeah. Oh, it ain't. It's my baby girl. Is it? Bev's car may be a wreck, but all her health checks are looking good so far. To go to hospital, get a full workup, and they'll better hopefully work out what's happened to her. Let's please, cars here. That's a massive saving and a massive benefit to JRU. Emergency call out is back next Tuesday at 10. Charting their brutal conquest almost a thousand years ago, brand new gripping documentary The Vikings begins with invasion tomorrow at 9. A horrendous crash leaves an 83 year old woman shell shocked and a tense situation to manage for the motorway cops catching Britain's speeders next.